My name is Megan Roselle. I'm a third year fibers and material practices major, and this is my room. What I love about the, living in the Great Aunt's house is that it has so much history and that I very much feel like I'm part of Montreal's history by living here. Ma famille était très religieuse euh, sur le côté de ma, de ma mère. Alors, ils ont, ils ont eu des expériences de devenir des sœurs ou de pratiquer la religion euh, ou de choisir cette mode de vie. Mais pas, je ne savais jamais qu'il y avait tellement d'histoire à cette location au centre-ville de Montréal. Euh, J'ai étudié à Concordia pendant trois ans. Et pendant deux années, j'avais aucune idée que ça se tenait ici. Alors c'est très spécial pour moi d'avoir vécu ici, d'avoir vu des histoires grandir et des histoires grandir. The things I tell my friends when I visit the building um, can vary. I feel very much like a tour guide because I'm so fascinated by the building itself. There was a presentation that was offered for Concordia students to attend talking about Green Ends history. So um, I talk about what the different buildings were before, or different rooms were set up. Um, I definitely show them the crypt and what that entails, and I talk about um, people doing pilgrimages to come here to pray to Margaret's Ville. Um, I'm also, I love ghost stories, so I share with them the few ghost stories that we have about the place. Um, but just talking about how it is now as well, the fact that we have like 600 students from all around the world that are now in one place and they're now becoming part of Montreal's history. To me, it's really interesting. Um, and I also talk about my involvement in that, which is like being a resident assistant and what that looks like. I'm Elizabeth Sanders and I'm in first year at Concordia University in art history and film studies. And this is my room. I grew up in Toronto, and then when I was 14 years old, we moved into the middle of nowhere. And during that time, I started to reflect a lot about like what I wanted to do and what type of environment that, that I wanted to be in. And it became pretty apparent to me after living in this small town that I really wanted to be in a city again, especially in a city where the arts are valued. I was really drawn to Montreal, and I thought that what was happening in the city, even just from this day-to-day -day street performers when I came in the summer, or uh, the interior world that grew in the winter since it was so cold. Um, and I just thought that that was incredible. So I decided that this was the place that I needed to be. What I love about Grey Nuns is that the building is just, it just has so much history in, in it. And even though I don't know that history, I can understand that, you know, there's going to be there are hundreds of people before me living here and hundreds of people after. And I mean, like as someone who is in art history and as in someone who is in, who d does do film history courses, you're kind of hyper aware of that, of that there's gonna be people before and after you. And so the fact that I get to live here um, in such an incredible time and in, I think Montreal's history, I just feel like this is an important time to be in the city. And the fact that like Montreal has already had these years of transformation and things like that and to have a building that has lasted in that time and then to be able to live in it is just i think incredible and also the aesthetic nature of it a friend and myself we were walking back from salvation army on key street and we stopped at rene levesque and, and key and we were just flabbergasted by how this building is present and how it's really well preserved and just basically how it feels almost dormant you know like it doesn't feel like there's people living inside of it and yet it's this nest and this protective sense of covering and housing all of these students that are new to the city and so I think that that kind of essence of this protective nature and this place where it can nurture the young is really incredible. Kind of the sanctuary in order to introduce us into our new lives but still have this homely nice sense les sentiments que j'ai en rentrant dans le chapel c'est je me rends présidentielle euh, automatiquement 
je sens un énorme lien avec moi et la ville en général. Euh, et aussi mon enfance. Et je pense à ma grand-mère, je pense à ma mère euh, et leur connexion avec la religion. Et euh, aussi, ça m'aide beaucoup à faire mes devoirs <rire> parce que je trouve que je dois être productive. Mais euh, c'est très spécial d'avoir cette place-là dans ma maison et de pouvoir dire que c'est parti de mon appartement. Euh, mais je me sens complètement montréalaise dans ces moments-là. It also is really nice because you have these areas of quiet within the building that I think are really organic to it and really special. Because I don't think that a lot of first year residences are, are like this. Like they don't have that, that sense of, of like sanctuary within the building. I read a lot of Simone de Beauvoir who is a feminist writer um, during the first during my first semester because I was in a philosophy course and she was one of the readings we had to read about. And she talked about like a lot of like what it means to be a woman. And she said that a lot of how women define themselves is through um, the mirror and through men. So how you aesthetically look and then how like your father, or your husband treats you or just the role you play in regards to them. So she talks a lot about how women don't really have a lot of their own identity. And so I've read a couple books about like where the main characters are nuns and like, you know, I've seen The Sound of Music and I watched this Polish film called Ida, which is about like a nun. And, um, and then also we watched some, some films in my film aesthetics class called like Black Narcissist that looks at these uh, female communities. And at first you, you kind of think like, oh wow, like that's such an oppressive nature. But in a way, when you're a nun, you're freeing yourself of your need to, for like, like your need to be defined by the mirror or, or your aesthetic appearance, and you're also freeing yourself of um, being forced to play the role of the mother or the daughter, or the husband or the girlfriend. So again, for me, that's so foreign as not being like a totally religious person, but then that empowerment of saying that all of these societal values that are placed onto us and being able to be free of that, and then instead, using the person you are to help other people, I thought that was really, really positive. I thought it was also really courageous because it's like, um, I'm not about to, to, to leave behind those things. And I couldn't even, I couldn't even imagine doing that, you know? So to just kind of drop what is expected of you and then to adopt these helpful roles that really benefit everyone in the end, I thought was really amazing of them and I admire them a lot for that.